Hey, Fred Minnick here, and today I am in Watch Hill proper. Uh, this is uh, in my neighborhood. It's a bar, restaurant with thousands of bourbons here, including some vintage stuff. I'm doing a series of videos in here. I also have a, I also have a dinner series here. Uh, you can find out more about those, link in the description. But basically, I'm doing these throughout the rest of the year. It's a great time. We have vintage pours. We have great whiskey, great food, great conversation, and a lot of education. But today, I am actually going to be reviewing uh, what I think is probably a more, uh, one of the more historic products that come out this year. This is an eight-year-old bottled and bond from A.D. Laws. A.D. Laws is a distiller in Colorado. They've been around the block for a minute. And now that uh, enough time has passed, a lot of these smaller distillers are kind of getting their, um, they're beyond like having to peddle their younger age stuff. They've got well-aged whiskey on the market. And AD Laws has been one of the leaders in the category. Now you'll see their mash bill um, in the graphic that we have posted here. But you know, whiskey is always more about more than just the recipe, right? It's the yeast, it's the aging, but it's also the environment it's in. And I have found that the altitude in Colorado can play a big impact on the aging of whiskey. So I'm excited to taste this. This is the oldest product I have tasted from AD Laws. Uh, AD Laws is a it's, uh, I would say that they probably have like a, uh, a cult following. When, when you look at brands that have uh, really strong followings, you know, it's because the company's done a good job of, you know, reaching, reaching a base uh, to build a distillery, build their company, what have you. And the success of a small distillery really depends upon those I would say super fans because in whiskey, you know, everybody hates everything until they like it. And I, find, I have found that some of these craft distillers are a lot like that. Like they, they had a lot of haters in the beginning, they muscled through, and then as the palates of the United States kind of changed and altered and gone toward different styles of whiskey, they tend to like them. Uh, 80 Laws for me, uh, has been a hit and miss brand. So I'm very excited to taste this. So let's give this a shot. It's a four grain. Four grains is a style of, um, four grain is a style of, uh, of bourbon where I like sometimes and sometimes I hate them. I mean, like really hate them. So let's see what, where I'm gonna stand here with this. Man, that smells good. Oh, damn. This has got the kind of nose on it that if this is wrong, I don't want to know what's right because it's, this is, this is amazing. This nose on this is a butterscotch bomb. Absolute butterscotch bomb. Wow. Um, just a touch of like oak in there. I'm getting some um, some uh, cigar box. Touch of pipe tobacco. Son of a bitch, this smells good. Some bitch. All right. When a nose smells this good, I'm like, oh, I hope it tastes like that. And if it doesn't, I'm like, shit, damn. But here we go, I'm going in for the taste. This is one of the best non-Kentucky bourbons I have ever tasted. This is fan friggin' tastic. I feel it all over my tongue. It's like really populating on the tip of my palate, the middle of my palate. Even the spice tracks in the back are really uh, lighting up. But what's incredible about this mouthfeel is that all those things are happening while it curls up underneath my tongue and kind of tickles it a little bit. 
So I would say this is a this is a type of uh, bourbon that really just moves all throughout the palate, just absolutely delicious. Now, from a notes perspective, it's complicated. And when you hear me say something is complicated, that means there is a lot going on and um, it takes me a minute to really figure out what all the flavors are. So there's a lot happening on my tongue. It's still happening. It's, I mean, I swallowed it what, however much time ago. I'm still feeling it as if I just put it on my tongue. It's powerful. It's still there, but I'm gonna taste it again to see if there's a couple dominant flavors that um, I really like on it. But wow. I'm gonna go with what I smelled of the butterscotch note, and then I'm gonna throw in like uh, some spice. Um, the spice just leans toward like the, the, the pepper spices. It's very, um, it were, like, a, like a raw jalapeno, like the essence of an, a jalapeno. Uh, it's not overly spicy, so it doesn't, it, it feels warm on the back of my palate. And then there's a kind of a mystery note here. Um, it's a, it's a, there's certain, you know, certain types of honey where I have tasted this before, like uh, some of the uh, honeys that I tasted from um, Ethiopia that were used to make Tej, which is a style of mead. Uh, they kind of come off as like, um, uh, a little earthy, somewhat smoky. It's, it's, it's a very particular type of honey. And I just don't think a lot of people have tasted that. So it's hard for me to describe this flavor. But if you've ever had, uh, if you've ever had Tej, which is T-E-J, it's an Ethiopian style of, uh, of mead. Um, that's what I'm tasting. Like if you've had that flavor, you know that flavor. Uh, that's it, but it's hard to describe outside of that um, And there's probably about 20 or 30 other notes if I were to sit down and really break this down, but this is a beautiful beautiful bourbon um, And I just I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for this small distiller in um, In Colorado to have hit a home run like this Cheers, wow, this is just I can't say enough good things about it but that's gonna do it for this tasting video. If you'd like to see more tasting videos, including uh, what I'm doing here today, click that subscribe button. If you wanna see these things before anybody else, uh, members get exclusive content from me. So click that join button and uh, really just appreciate you all tuning in. And in your journey of bourbon, just remember, vodka sucks. Cheers.